Have you ever run across something you didn't know you needed? I've used this cooler filled with ice for every family vacation for the past 20 some years. And I'm very frugal, so why change? Dealing with ice, soggy food, draining out the water, those were just the facts of life. But then Joy Tuttis contacted me right before this year's family vacation and offered to send me their dual zone fridge freezer to try out. Wait, no ice? No wet, soggy food? Yes, send it to me and I'll test it out. But you know me, I wanted to be able to run it off grid, charge it with solar. So stay tuned to see how that turned out. Welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. Let's go on vacation and see what this fridge can do. All right, we have the cooler in the car, all the stuff for our trip, all the things that we are bringing, eggs and peanut butter and water and all kinds of stuff. I have a data logger and we'll put thermal couples in each side of the cooler so we can track the temperature throughout the day and as we travel and make sure that it stays within the range. I'll go ahead and connect it to the car's 12 volt and off to the side, I have the Joy Tuttis backup battery. If we stop for to go to eat or go to the beach or something and we wanna make sure that the cooler stays running, I can just switch it over to the battery and we'll have to rely on the car's battery to keep it running. So let's go ahead and plug it in. I went ahead and started the car and the unit's powered up. Temperatures are all set. Should be ready to go. I made sure to leave clearance to the areas where air needs to flow so that it can uh, flow air through the compressor area and not overheat. So let me stick my thermocouples in and get the data logger on and we'll get on the road. There we go. Ready to roll. The first eight hours went just fine. We had easy access to the cooler. And even though the fan makes some noise, you really couldn't hear it over the sound of the engine and road noise. The handle is a little bit short, like most coolers, so it kind of hits the back of your legs, but it was really nice to be able to just put the cooler against the wall and be done for the day and not have to unload it into the hotel fridge for the night. On our way, we stopped to do a three dune challenge and spend a few hours on the beach, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to test out the high heat performance of the cooler. We had all of our snacks and food for the day packed in. I put the thermal couples in. It was over 85 degrees out, and the temperature inside the car rose to over 100 degrees. So let's take a quick look at that data. This chart shows the temperature from three thermal couples. The red one on top is the temperature inside the vehicle. This green one is the temperature inside the fridge, and this blue one is the temperature inside the freezer. Now, when we first parked the car, it was over 80 degrees outside and inside the car, and that temperature slowly rose over the first hour or so. And then it looks like the sun started to hit the car and it rose quite rapidly up over 120 degrees Fahrenheit inside the car, over 50 degrees Celsius. Then we got into the car for something and that dropped the ambient temperature a bit, but still over 100 degrees all the way to the end of the three hours. The temperature inside the fridge, there was a lot of content in the fridge. It held very steady, right around 40 degrees Fahrenheit or four degrees Celsius. And the temperature inside the freezer bounces around a bit. There wasn't very much material inside there to hold that temperature steady, but either way, it was well below freezing the entire time. And the things that we had in there that were frozen stayed completely frozen. So I thought this was pretty amazing. While we're out running around, the Joy Tuttis 216 watt hour battery was able to hold the temperature in the cooler without running out of power for three hours at very high temperatures. Overall, a really neat result. It was super convenient to be able to pack the cooler with food for the day, then run around doing our sightseeing activities. I kept the battery and cooler plugged into the vehicle 12 volt receptacles while driving around, then powered the cooler with the battery when we stopped for an activity. One day on the way back to the lodge, we stopped to get groceries, including ice cream, then decided to stop for a quick hike to an abandoned mine. In the past, we might have missed this unique activity in order to rush back and keep the ice cream from melting. Well, that's enough practical use. Let's look at the specs. This is a two zone fridge freezer and you can actually adjust the temperature in both compartments to anything you want. The control panel allows you to modify those settings. You can set them both to freeze or both to fridge, whatever you want, which is really neat. And it actually works. The large compartment has a lot more cooling capacity so it gets to its temperatures a little bit more succinctly than the small compartment.
If you want to research it directly, you can see the compressor is model number ZH25G. It's a very common 1224 volt R134A compressor for these types of fridges. The components are all nicely mounted. My only complaint is the noise from the condenser fan. It would have been so easy to install a whisper quiet computer style fan. And in fact, you could probably do it yourself if the noise bothers you. In the car, you can't really hear it, and it must not be all that loud because it sat in my dining room for three months running nonstop because every time I tried to put it away, there was a sale on milk or somebody picked strawberries or there was a family gathering and we wanted to put use it for the extra food storage. So uh, be careful. If you get one of these, you might be using it all the time. Now the warranty is two years and I couldn't do a long-term test. Over the three months that I ran it continuously, the only problem I had was some slight condensation buildup around the edge of the freezer, which I had set at its absolute lowest temperature. And that's because these seals aren't very wide. So there's a little bit of moisture can gather around from the ambient air and that can freeze because the air is so cold around the opening. Other than that, it ran flawlessly for three months. The weight of this fridge is 34 and a half pounds versus one of these regular coolers. This one's a little over nine pounds, but then when you add two 10 pound bags of ice, you're almost the same weight. So even though it starts out a little heavier, you're not adding the weight of ice. This also has a high, medium, and low setting for battery life. If you connect this directly to the battery on your car, you don't want it to drain it all the way to dead and then you won't be able to start it. So you can set it so that it will automatically turn off if the battery gets too low. All right, let's look at the performance specs, the cost, and then draw some final conclusions and I'll go over some exclusive discounts. Let's see if this freezer really works by trying to freeze a water bottle. So the unit has reached its maximum low temperature. It's actually minus six degrees Fahrenheit right now for the small compartment. So I'm gonna stick a bottle of water in there and see how long it takes for it to freeze. All right, let's check to see if it's frozen. Well, it's all crystals, slushy, mostly frozen. We'll see how long it takes to be frozen solid. Well, somewhere in the last 12 hours, it froze completely solid. The water bottle turned to slush in two hours and 35 minutes, and it took about 12 hours to freeze completely solid. So the freezer works great. The USB port puts out almost exactly five volts, and I was able to pull 3.4 amps before the voltage started to drop. So a very capable USB charging port. From completely warm in a room at about 75 degrees, it would start drawing 65 watts and then level out around 45 watts, and it took about 35 minutes to come to temperature and the first 24 hours of use used 0.78 kilowatt hours from the AC adapter. Running it on battery power using the 216 watt Joy Tuttis lasted eight hours and 50 minutes, which was pretty fantastic. I did a capacity test on the battery and I measured it at 223 watt hours. So even more than its rated capacity. Now the 12 volt output isn't regulated. It starts at 16.5 volts and the fridge stopped working at about 13 volts. So if you have devices that need a regulated 12 volt output, this won't work for you, but it does work great for this solution. Then I wanted to see how long it could last using my Blue Eddy EB70S, which is rated for 716 watt hours, but its capacity is actually a little bit less than that. Using the 12 volt adapter, the runtime was 25 hours and 30 minutes. So with no solar connected at all, you can run this cooler for more than 24 hours with the Blue Eddy. Now, of course, if you connect solar, you can pretty much run it continuously. Now, I wanted to see if this Joy Tuttis battery could work with a solar panel. It does not have a charge controller, but because of its wide voltage range on the input, most 12 volt rated panels will work with it. This battery unit doesn't have a solar tracker in it. However, it has a really wide input voltage from 12 to 28 volts, which should make it compatible with the solar panel. 23 volts. That's within the range. Let's see what happens. 23 volts and 1.76 amps. Well, let's leave it there and see how much charging we get. I connected 180 watt panel and a 200 watt panel to it, and they both work just fine. 
The most I could pull was about two amps, which is gonna be somewhere between 40 and 50 watts. So there's no need to have a 200 watt panel unless you wanna be able to power it when it's cloudy. Probably a 100 watt panel would work just fine. I connected a mostly dead Joy Tutus battery and a 200 watt solar panel to it. The panel was able to charge the battery while bringing the fridge to temperature. It ran all day long, no problem. Within several hours, the battery was charged and it was just running off of solar. So with eight hours of nighttime runtime and solar power during the day, you can pretty much run all day with one of the Joy Tutus batteries. This very small form factor battery turns out to be a great companion to this refrigerator. It works great on vacation. You can see from here, it can run it for over eight hours with no solar and with solar pretty much all day. I've put together a price comparison chart here just to put a few things into perspective. I have a couple of coolers here. One is just a standard Coleman cooler. It's a 67 liter or 71 quart, but you have to put ice in it to keep things cold. And that takes up at least half the space, which drops you down to about 34 liters of usable space. And you can't freeze things in it. So it's a low cost, but it has limited capability. Now, Yeti sells some very high quality coolers with very thick insulation that allow you to hold the temperature for a long time, but they are very expensive, almost as much as the cost of a powered refrigerated unit. And you can't freeze things in them. And a 52 liter unit only has 26 liters of available space by the time you put your ice in it. So you have to get a very large cooler when you're using ice in order to have the same amount of usable space. Now for the Joy Tutus fridge, I put two options in here. One is just the base fridge by itself, which gives you refrigeration, freezing, and 40 liters of actual usable space. However, you have to have vehicle power or some other power source. And if you already have that, great. But if you don't, I really recommend getting the 216 amp hour battery that Joy Tutus offers. It'll power the unit for about four hours, at least three hours in really high temperatures. And you'll be able to have your fridge and freezing capability anywhere you go. Plus the really neat thing about the battery is you can connect a solar panel, which will allow you to run it all day without any issues. I'll leave a link in the description to these charts for your reference. So can I recommend this fridge? Well, it certainly delivers everything I could want in a fridge, freezer, cooler. However, only time will tell if the long-term durability is really there. It definitely makes sense if you don't have easy access to ice. The fan's a little noisy, but not loud enough to keep it from being used in the dining room for three months, and it's not audible in the car. Overall, I'm impressed with the usability. For the next three days only, September 3rd through the 7th, Joy Tutus is offering my viewers a 10% discount using my channel exclusive code, Projects Dave. Use the link in the description below or the QR code on the screen. The links in the description will be continually updated, but the code is only good for the next three days. So happy camping, and I'll see you next time.